So you got yourself a fancy new Ryzen 5600X. And unlike its bigger brothers, the 5800, 5900, and 5950X, it still does come with a CPU cooler. So you should be good to go, right? Think again. If you haven't checked out my build video yet, go ahead and take a look. But essentially, I'm running the 5600X paired with a MSI B550 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi motherboard, an RTX 3070, uh, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 Corsair Vengeance RAM. I've got a Superflower 750 watt gold power supply. And my main hard drive is a Sabrent PCIe 4.0 M.2 drive. And of course I was initially using the stock Wraith cooler that came with the 5600X, but that clearly wasn't cutting it. Before I get into the numbers, let's go ahead and take a look at the cooler itself. So the cooler and the heatsink actually feel pretty hefty in your hand. It doesn't feel like a really cheap air CPU cooler. The fan spins very smoothly. It's a seven blade design. There's no RGB on here whatsoever. This is the uh, Wraith Stealth, I believe. Now, if AMD is including this cooler with their CPU, you would think that it would be more than adequate to cool it, especially if you're not overclocking. Now the 5600X is a 6-core CPU with a base clock of 3.7 GHz and a max boost clock of 4.6 GHz. The case that I'm running is a Cooler Master TD Mesh 500, so it's really large, there's tons of airflow, three intake fans in the front, I installed my own fan in the back for exhaust, um, tons of air going in there, so I don't need to worry about that. What I found was under heavy gaming loads, my CPU was getting into the 80s, well into the 80s, and with specific tasks like benchmarking or using Adobe Premiere and exporting videos, I was getting as high as 91 degrees, and this was way out of my comfort zone. I know these Ryzen CPUs can run a little bit hot, but I think that this was just way too much. Clearly something needed to be done. So I picked up this bad boy, the Cooler Master ML360R RGB. Overkill? Probably. Now this is a huge 360 milliliter all-in-one liquid cooler. It's even bigger than a lot of other 360 milliliter coolers, and I initially thought that this wasn't going to fit in my case over my RAM. The installation was pretty painful especially with all of the RGB wires and just trying to finagle everything in there. It took a lot of time and I had to do it very slowly. One of the big issues was that these RAM sticks are really large, so getting the cooler to fit in over them was pretty tight, as you can see. The results really speak for themselves. I now idle in the high 20s to low 30s. Under heavy gaming load, it really never goes above 52 or 53. And in benchmarking and synthetic loads like Silverbench, I can get it as hot as maybe 62, but I've never seen it go higher than that. Same thing with Adobe Premiere when I'm exporting videos. It'll get up to like 59, 60, but I can't really push it past the low 60s which is great, that's a huge improvement, um, pretty much like 30 degrees. I didn't think that I would need to buy a separate cooler and thought I was saving some money, but at the end of the day, the temperatures were just totally out of my comfort zone and I have much better peace of mind with this new all-in-one liquid cooler in there and my temps are way, way lower. And a nice touch is the RGB because of course that also decreases temperatures by like 10 to 15 degrees, I think. Anyway, let me know what you guys are finding. I know some reviewers had these overheating issues while others didn't, so I'm not sure if there's some variability in the silicon, but leave a comment down below and bite that subscribe button. Until next time.